Uh, this presentation is going to be about my experience of using the ARM University program System on a Chip Education Kit. In fact, more specifically, the Introduction to System on a Chip uh, Education Kit. Um, I taught this to a group of final year, that's fourth year in Scotland, um, and fifth year if they're doing MEng students in electrical engineering earlier this year. And the nature of this uh, presentation, as I suppose the title gives away, is uh, it's going to be like a review of what's it like to use one of the ARM education, uh, ARM University program education kits. I'm not going to go in, uh, give it a sort of what is the kit so much as uh, how did I find using it. So um, I've given you a little bit of parts of this background already, but to uh, flesh that out a little bit more, um, I've been a lecturer for several years now and I've taught subjects like DSP, microcontroller basics, uh, all the ones that uh, you've got listed there. However, it was only last year that I was made responsible for teaching half a course on digital electronics. And uh, this came about through the retiral of one of our members of staff and I inherited some fairly uh, well used materials on boundary scan and design for test which I felt were looking a bit tired and uh, between you and me I thought were looking a bit impenetrable and so uh, not unilaterally but with agreement uh, I decided to do something a little bit different. Now there uh, two factors came into play really firstly I was already familiar with the ARM University programs education kits I knew what uh, ARM University program was trying to do with these and at the same time I uh, have quite a preference for trying to do hands-on laboratory exercise based work to get um, actual uh, electrical things happening rather than theoretical things happening and to try and uh, one of the terms that uh, our head of school likes us to use and I've got no objections to it at all is uh, learn by doing rather than just uh, learn by uh, sitting in a lecture theatre. Um, I could add at this point uh, perhaps in way of background that these fourth and fifth year students that I was uh, teaching this to uh, had already studied uh, a bit of C programming and a little bit of Verilog programming as well in their earlier courses that they've been doing. So um, I've mentioned already that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of what's in the system on a chip uh, education kit because I'm not so much trying to describe it as describe what my uh, experience of using it was. Um, but just uh, in case you're not familiar with this already, um, the education kits from ARM University program typically contain lecture slides that you can uh, stand up and talk to, but then uh, more importantly probably laboratory instructions and of course to back up the laboratory instructions you've got, something, got to have something that's happening in the lab and they provide example pieces of code um, essentially. And of course, I'll, I'll talk about hardware in due course. They're also uh, typically providing uh, particular hardware platforms for this. And maybe these are in the wrong order. Maybe the tutorial questions should have gone after the lecture slides. Um, in addition to these uh, system on a chip education kit, um, to these education kit materials from ARM University program and uh, ARM University program gave me uh, or us uh, time limited access to the um, complementary ARM online course materials and basically the bit of that that was quite useful for us and the students and I looked at a bit were uh, instructional uh, videos or I say instructional videos, in fact essentially what these were were kind of uh, run-throughs of some of the laboratory experiments that were involved. And the, um, 
Well, to be, to be absolutely true, we did this on another of ARM University programs education kits, the DSP one. We had a little sampler. No, we didn't have a sampler. We paid for um, the use of these instructional videos and the reception that students gave those was very positive. They really seemed to like to run these in the lab and rerun them and to rewind and so on. And as I say, the uh, reception for those was very good from the students. So these were the materials that were provided that uh, I was making use of. As far as the technical content of the Introduction to System on a Chip uh, Education Kit is concerned, it is all about a system on a chip that looks like this. It's basically, um, I'm not sure this is, that this is the terminology that's used in the Education Kit, but as far as I'm concerned, basically what we're looking at is making an ARM core based microcontroller, albeit a rather simple one. Essentially, uh, we've got the ARM, we've, in this case, we've got an ARM Cortex M0 microprocessor core. And as you're probably aware, what ARM provide in terms of the core is the CPU uh, architecture and um, the, the most uh, fundamental elements of a computer. And it turns out that uh, a very, very insightful way of looking at all this is to home in. It sounds uh, kind of daunting and maybe not entirely intuitive, but something, what it turns out that it's uh, insightful to home in on is the bus system that is connecting all of these elements together, that being the processor core from ARM and uh, the peripheral devices that you want to have on your semiconductor device. And the bus that was uh, looked at in this, or is looked at in this education kit, is the uh, ARM AHB Lite bus, which is uh, widely used for connecting to these kind of peripheral devices inside a microcontroller. There are, there's, a, there's a whole family of buses uh, that are specified by ARM, but uh, we necessarily homed in on just one of these. And the next slide, um, this is relevant uh, because Cortex-M processor cores and AHP light buses, are, I've already said, are pretty widely used in industry. Pretty much coincidentally, uh, at the beginning of this year, when I was setting up this course and uh, learning a bit about its contents myself, I was contacted by someone in a local semiconductor company and there's nothing secret about this, uh, and equal, but equally I'm not trying to promote them or anything, but it, uh, for what it's worth it was a company called Allegro Microsystems and basically they design, uh, or the part in Edinburgh, designs uh, integrated circuits that, you, that are used in the automotive industry. And I was uh, out of the blue, sort of, contacted by someone there and he said, we've just bought a license for using ARM Cortex-M4 processor cores. We're going to design a new chip using this. Uh, we've seen that you've written a book that has ARM Cortex-M4 in the title. So do you think you could uh, maybe give us some kind of advice? So um, I suffered a sudden attack of imposter syndrome because actually my book, although the, the title contains uh, Cortex-M4, it's not really the focus of the book. But anyway, I had a meeting uh, with uh, this chap from Allegro Microsystems and almost immediately what it turned out was that he said, we're interested in an AHB light bus. We've got all our peripherals from our previous designs and we want to connect them to a Cortex-M4 using AHB light bus. So, um, a, I was able to bluff my way a little bit uh, in talking to him and in fact we, we went and we had a meeting with uh, engineers at the company. Um, but uh, also I think it shows that uh, this is relevant technology. This is being used out in industry. So um, I mentioned previously uh, the sort of soft elements of the ARM University Programme Education Kit. 
There's a hardware element as well in order to do what I would call hands-on. For me, hands-on activities, it wants to be something that actually has hardware involved, isn't just simulations. And the uh, board that um, we used was this one here. It's uh, an FPGA development board. The, co the, the center of it is an FPGA on which the bits that I showed you in that block diagram before uh, are going to be uh, instantiated or they're going to be synthesized and then I don't even know quite the terminology to use here. But anyway, uh, this particular board, uh, the Numato Mimus, Mimus V2 development board, as you can see, is pretty inexpensive. But it gives us uh, pretty much exactly what we need for this type of course. Um, as well as the FPGA, we've got features like we've got push buttons, we've got dip switches, we've got LEDs, we've got uh, seven segment displays, we've got a micro SD card uh, slot, and we've got a VGA output. So we can actually drive a VGA monitor off this uh, inexpensive and relatively simple board. Of course, um, my position in this is that I looked at this option and thought that looks very suitable to me, I'll go for it. Our department bought 50 of these boards so that we could uh, run the course. Um, of course, it's ARM who actually, uh, if you like, I don't know if they found it or they drove its development, it doesn't matter, but what I'm saying is that, uh, or what I'm get about to say is that uh, of course, it was necessary that ARM University Programme had recently ported this education kit, so it runs on this uh, piece of kit. So um, perhaps not much, uh, not that much uh, brain power on my part involved here. But anyway, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we arrived at a pretty uh, good situation, i.e. Uh, able to do the type of SOC introduction activities that are include that I'm interested in doing with the students on low-cost hardware. The the education kit, as it comes from ARM uh, ARM University program, is designed uh, so that as it stands, you can give a one semester or a one-term uh, course on the subject area. But in fact, uh, the hint was in there, but, you probably, but there was no reason for you to remember it. I was given half a course. I was given six weeks. And so this is what I'm getting at when I, I've got a slide labeled flexibility. What I actually did was I went into the uh, education kit and I kind of pulled out the bits that I wanted to use. Uh, so I actually uh, modified the laboratory exercise instructions somewhat. And once uh, the students, uh, this is how I fondly imagined it was working, uh, once the students had uh, seen the implementation of some of the simpler peripheral devices, um, I think the uh, well, it would be the SRAM, the GPIO, and the LED driving, but uh, I'll come back to the SRAM in a moment. Uh, then, uh, whereas I think the instructions as provided gave you a timer counter, and maybe you did uh, some parameter changes on that, I set our students the task of uh, implementing a timer counter module to a certain specification, essentially from scratch. I mean, I say, from scratch is a relative term here. They already had uh, examples of uh, how to write code to implement the AHP light bus interface. But I didn't tell them anything about the uh, timing or counting functions. I mean, we weren't doing super complicated stuff, but uh, I did set, a, I felt, a little bit more of a creative uh, task to the students and for next year because the, the course will run in the spring again 
I'm thinking about maybe going a little bit further. One idea I have that quite interests me, because we could get some analog signals out, would be perhaps to uh, get students to make a, a simple digital to analog converter. This would need um, some external components that aren't actually on that board, but the GPIOs are available. So, um, this is what I think I was trying to get across in this presentation. Uh, this education kit is quite adaptable. It's enabled an academic whose primary expertise isn't necessarily in system on chip to, to teach an industry relevant course incorporating hands-on laboratory exercises. Um, I said a little bit too about, uh, no I didn't say about this, I said I was able to uh, adapt the materials uh, to fit my time scale and to put some of the things in that I thought were particularly interesting. It occurred to me while I was doing this uh, that uh, this education kit, <coughs> if you do choose to adapt it a little bit, there are so many different directions you could go in you could get the students exploring much more about programming the M0 core that they've put on the FPGA. I mean, that's obviously a, a huge area in itself. They could uh, get heavily into designing very specific and possibly more complex peripheral devices and um, all that that entails, you know, more Verilog code, uh, more uh, consideration of digital hardware design or uh, they could, uh, they might put more emphasis on uh, measuring the performance of the system that they've built and what parameters or factors might influence that performance or lots of other things. So I think there's, there's actually um, huge uh, potential for different activities based on this inexpensive hardware platform and based as a starting point on the SOC education kit. And then uh, the final conclusion, the, the SOC introduction education kit and this really low cost but uh, really quite useful uh, FPGA development platform uh, opens up uh, you know, an exciting opportunity in the university curriculum. Thank you.